Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and today I have a few things that I want to do with you guys. Um, if you've been around for a while you know that I've been working on revamping a lot of the aquariums on the main wall of my fish room in order to set up model communities for you guys. And what you don't know is that a couple months ago I had a very good friend of mine named Ricky Chawla come down to the fish room and do a guest aquascape for me. Now Ricky skates a lot like I do, which is just very intuitively and with the thoughts that the aquascape should be designed to showcase the fish. Um, and he, as well as I, have a special interest in these wild bettas. So he threw together a scape for me and we're gonna take a look at that. Now if you watched last week's video about brown water, you know that I'm a big fan of botanicals. And wild bettas and bettas in general really, really benefit and appreciate botanicals. I reached out to Scott of Tannin Aquatics and asked him if he would curate a package for me that's special for bettas. And he was more than happy to help. So today we're going to open up my box from Tannin Aquatics and see what he's picked, add it to the aquarium, and take a look. Now I had originally wanted to wait to show you guys this aquarium until it was all grown in because there's some really interesting plant species in there. However, it's taking its sweet ass time so we're going to take a look today anyway. Let's open up this box and see what Scott sent us. Now one of the things that I really like about Tannin Aquatics um, is they have a nice wide range of different kinds of botanicals that we can add to our aquarium and a really, really incredible blog about the benefits and how to use the various products that they sell. And I also think that their packaging is incredible. I'm really excited to, uh, to see what's in here. Um, this is very nice. Uh, when you open the box, there's directions on how to prepare the botanicals for our aquariums um, and some beautiful images as well. These are gorgeous. So it says to rinse them, boil them, and then soak them overnight to make sure they're completely saturated and then to add them gradually, which we talked about last week. Oh, look, how cool. Thanks, Scott. Jackfruit leaves, those are a beautiful shape. Really nice. Um, one of the things that I asked him to take into consideration was that my aquarium's relatively small, um, only being 20 gallons. So I didn't want materials that were too big that would mess up the scale, um, both of the fish, the aquascape and everything. These are beautiful too, yellow mangrove leaves. Again, um, you can see that the various sizes together are gonna really make a big impact in the aquarium. These are gorgeous too. These I am super excited about, mariposa pods. I just imagine the wild bet bettas swimming right underneath these guys and using them as like little caves. They're gorgeous. One other thing that I really like about Scott's whole products and business model is look at this attention to detail. This is just fantastic. Oh, and look, we got an Enigma pack, which is, um, I'm not sure that I'm pronouncing this correctly, but Savu pods, yellow mangrove leaves, jackfruit leaves, live oak leaves. Palm stems, lampada pods, banana stem pieces, mini mariposa pods, cocoa curls, jungle pods, helix pods, concha pods, catapa bark, and sarindo pods. Very cool. And this has as well um, the information from the owner, Scott Feldman. Wow, look at this, guys. Look at these. I am so beyond excited. These are absolutely perfect. Look at them. Wow. This is incredible. I'm really excited. So we're going to take all my botanicals upstairs and uh, prepare them so that we can add them to the aquarium. 
So I've gathered together all of the botanicals and I've pulled out how much I think I want to use for my 20 gallon. And I'm going to put it in a clean pot, um, boil it, and you could actually save the water that you boil from it if you wanted to in order to use it as like a tea. Um, however, I'm not going to because I don't need to. Now on their website has specific directions for how long to boil everything. I'm just doing it so that stuff will sit, sink. So I'm not particularly concerned um, about, you know, removing anything or, or anything like that. I simply want this stuff to sink. How long you need to boil this uh, varies greatly on what the material is. I've combined them all here together. Some things like these pods will take substantially longer, but I'll just use a wooden spoon to press them underneath the water and then use this little kitchen tool to fish stuff out as it's done. Now the purpose of this is to make sure that we're removing any potential for impurities. They do have these collected from areas they know are safe, but rather safe than sorry. Um, and most importantly in my mind, it will help this stuff sink for me to be able to add it to the aquarium. Now they do recommend soaking it overnight as well, which I may or may not do. Um, this will also remove like a burst of the tannins that all of these substances have though certainly they'll continue to leach tannins the entire time they're in water. One thing that I really like about all this stuff as well is that as it breaks down, it produces uh, food for fry and small fish, infusoria, various small microorganisms. Um, you will find sometimes that when you add it to your aquarium that it will, um, it will develop a biofilm on it, similar to that of driftwood, which appears... Uh, in appearance looks like a fungus but it's not and that will resolve or like in the aquarium I'm putting these in I have algae eaters in there that will take care of it um, sometimes you also get an algae outbreak but that usually resolves after a few weeks and then you just get to enjoy your botanicals so I'm gonna get these boiled and then we'll go down and place them in the aquarium just want to show you guys the amount of tannins that came out of the botanicals uh, with that boil it's pretty impressive Good morning guys, it is the next day and I have my tannins, which are coffee, as well as the botanicals which have been soaking overnight. I decided to follow the rules and recommendations of the person who sent them to me. Um, and the tank is right above my head and we'll take a closer look here just in a second. Now, one thing that is generally recommended is that you add these gradually. So what I did instead is I have a whole ton of almond leaves in that aquarium, most of which I'll remove um, in order to add these botanicals. And as you can see, it already has a nice yellow cast to it. But I'm super excited to incorporate a bunch of these botanicals that have a more interesting scale, um, a variety of textures, and most importantly, things to enrich my fish's life. So let's go ahead and get closer to the tank and start adding some of these bad boys in there. So this is the aquarium as it is right now. Um, you can see it's already stocked. We may or may not be able to see um, sort of the showcase fish in there. They're a bit shy. This aquarium also is set up with a lid, which I rarely do, but wild bettas are known for jumping. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't allow that to happen. Now, removing these leaves is gonna stir quite a bit up, but that's okay. I may leave a few of these in here, but I'm really more excited about the botanicals that I have from Tannin than anything else. Um, now, it's important to mention that botanicals break down over time. That's sort of the point, um, that they provide sort of the enrichment and that's how they work. And you can see here, this leaf is at the end of its life. I usually leave them until they become a skeleton like that. So again, I've let all my botanicals soak overnight and now I'm just gonna place them in here in ways that I think make sense. And I'm really relieved that these big pods are sinking right away. I wasn't entirely sure that I boiled them for long enough, but I was impatient. I'm thinking I should have boiled more of these. I really love them.
Um, the nice thing about buying the packages is that, you know, it comes with a lot extra. Now I'm just going to drop everything in here and then we'll tweak it. Now this aquarium is still not done. Right now it's currently stocked with a bunch of Barraris Brigitte or Chili Rasboras, as well as a half dozen Betta Imbellus, a really cool wild Betta from, I believe, Borneo, um, that I picked up at a recent convention. Now we're gonna take a closer look and feed the aquarium and see if we can't get those wild Bettas to come out. But the hope is that with all these botanicals, it'll provide enough enrichment in that bottom third of the aquarium that those fish will become much more visible than they have been. Um, there's also some Amano shrimp in here, and I will get the plant list from my buddy Ricky. He brought most of the plants for this and add that to the description as well. I know for a fact it has Anubia, some really cool crypt, some Bucephalandras, some narrow leaf Java fern, some tri Java fern trident, as well as a Legandra in the back that's taking its sweet time poking through. As with all of my aquariums, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And this is one that I hope to have set up for years to come so that we can watch it grow, fill in, and enjoy together. Let me know down in the comments what kind of background you would like to see applied to this. Uh, in the meantime, let's get some baby brine shrimp and see what the fish do. These are the chili rasboras. You can see that they look exceptional in this aquarium and they're really well suited to being housed with the wild bettas now to see if any of the wild bettas will come out and play as mentioned i added a half a dozen of the wild bettas in here but i have only seen a couple at a time so mono is exploring the new botanicals Now it's only a matter of time before these wild guys get way more comfortable in here. You can see they're already exploring their new surroundings. And they're just a really, really, really cool fish. Now once I can get some good footage of them to share with you guys, I'll be sure to do a species spotlight. But in the meantime, you can see how interested they are in all the botanicals and I'm really hopeful that it's going to be a great way to showcase these little fish for you guys. What a beauty. As always, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what kind of background you want to see on this aquarium and what sort of content you'd like to see from me. I am just really, really geeked and wanted to thank Ricky for his help with this aquascape as well as Scott from Tannin Aquatics for supplying me with all of these amazing botanicals. Just a quick reminder that I'll be in Winnipeg next week and I'll put a link to that event down below.